This video is part of my financial series where I take you step by step in building Power BI financial reports and dashboards. Enjoy. You like stories? I love stories. And who doesn't? Storytelling is really a great way to present your data. And I, I have, I'm not a finance person myself, not a CPA or CFA, but uh, CFA, is that an acronym? I think it is. But I have worked with uh, a whole lot of them for a significant period that I've seen that they love to tell stories with data, with the numbers, and there are specific patterns that they follow that I have picked up. And this is one of the patterns. So if you are just closing the books on August, they would get together and present this view. They would say, uh, okay, well, we just, uh, okay, let me do this right. So we just closed August and these were the numbers for that month. But then they also show a quarter to date view. So this would be the quarter July through August and say, hey, and this is how the quarter looked like. But then they would also have another view which will say, oh, by the way, this is how your complete year is shaping up. And you can you can read so much from this. So you can see that, hey, this month, we didn't do that great. And it seems we got worse from the prior month. But overall in the year, we were really tanking. So we have gotten a little bit better in that. So again, that's the way they kind of love to tell stories. So we're going to take a look at how we can do this. And this is going to be really easy with the magic of Power BI. So let's go look at the measures involved here. And you can see all I've done is create a bunch of time intelligence measures. And you can see how easy it is using the built in time intelligence functions. Now we have already covered this in the main course, I'm going to not going to go over that. But you can see the pattern here. So we have actual quarter to date again build like Lego blocks I've already defined the actual measure I'm not going to redefine it I'm just going to say calculate actual dates QDD and the year to date version and similarly for the rest of them so yeah really straightforward measures but then they give us this result which allows us to tell that story at the, at the uh, end of that fiscal month now notice here that at the bottom you have some detail now this detail corresponds to the current month and you can see uh, from the number here the 1.8 million is what's represented for the current month and and that's fair I guess you know so you have you're looking at the current month quarter date year to date and then you have a little more detail about the month but when you're having that financial meeting that monthly meeting you never know where the discussion is going to go. Sometimes they are focused on the month that just closed and they're going to stay focused on that. And you can, you know, kind of analyze and slice and dice and see what's going on on that specific month. But sometimes the discussion uh, goes around the quarter and they want to focus on, hey, how were things in quarter? And sometimes you just want to focus on the year to date. So how can we make this section more dynamic? Let's take a look at that next. Whoa, whoa, intervention, my friends, intervention. Before we proceed any further, we have to talk about something here. So you notice here that it says year 2017. If you look at the filters, I have a filter set to year 2017 and then the month August. Now, this is a fair way to do it, but if you've heard me talk about this, I'm an inherently lazy person. And these things sometimes cause a death by a thousand cuts. So if you have a lot of reports which are kind of set to a specific month, but then once September closes, somebody has to come back in here and click September for that to take effect. And again, when the year changes, that's that's too much work for the lazy old me. And being lazy is being smart and being effective. Now, we have covered the offset techniques in the calendar table series. So uh, I'm just going to show that to you really quick. So really in production, I would not have the slicer here and I would not have the year filter over here in production. What I would use is simply current month offset is minus one. Now, if you remember the offset zero represents the current month, which we're saying is September, September 2017. And minus one means just look at the last month. So look at the last completed months. And the advantage of this is that it's going to update automatically. So next month, I don't have to do change anything automatically. This is going to switch over to September and then the month after is going to switch to October and so forth. So that's how I would do it in production. However, 
I don't want to, I want to stick to, I want us to focus on the dashboard and not get any confused, uh, confused with the offset, because I believe it's a, it could be a, a, sometimes a tricky concept to grasp. So uh, for going forward, we're going to stick to using the year and the month filter as is, but I want you to know that in production settings, this is how I would approach it by using month offset so that I don't have to change and keep changing the month selection. Hey, keep watching more videos and keep learning Power BI. But if you did enjoy this video, I would love to hear from you. So leave a comment, like, subscribe, all the good stuff. Power on, my friends.